Hi, everyone. Uh, I can see people ready to start seeing us. Uh, hi, David. So uh, we are very pleased to have with us today Adam Stevenson, uh, Director of uh, Data Analytics at the Health Foundation. Uh, Health Foundation are very, uh, are very close friends and our founders as well. So we, um, we hope, Adam, um, uh, everyone will welcome you in a second. And uh, over to you now. Great. Um, thanks. And um, it's fantastic to be here. And um, it's fantastic to hear that 1,000 people have registered. And yet again, the our community has grown and gone uh, strength to strength uh really great um i just want to tell you a little bit about um the health foundation and the work that we do and uh why we've been so keen to support the NHSR community and tell you a bit about, about how you can get involved in our in our work as well uh if you don't know us the health foundation is a charity uh we're based in london and we have a mission to improve health and health care for people living in the uk and our history is um, where we started. Uh, it's really about supporting um, frontline NHS teams to support um, um, patients and deliver better care. Over the uh, last 20 years, the foundation has um, dedicated um, over 100 million pounds worth of funding to frontline teams. And we've done all kinds of different things to help improve patient care. And a recurrent theme from our programs has been um, that our frontline teams really struggle to get access to data, the data they need to understand the quality of care delivered to patients, um, the efficiency with which care is delivered, and to systematically improve that over time. So six years ago, um, the Health Foundation began to invest in a data analytics team to uh, help fix this problem. We've established a team in-house, uh, so we've got a team of about um, 25 analysts, I'll tell you a bit more about our work in a second. Um, and we've also been um, uh, opening up new funding streams uh, to NHS analysts and social care analysts as well uh, to try to support you to do better work. So now I could just switch on some slides, which uh, hopefully you'll be able to see clearly enough. Brilliant. So um, this is our mission. Uh, we want to ensure that everyone's health and healthcare benefits from analytics and data-driven technology. Uh, of course, there have been many developments in analytics and data-driven technology that you'll know uh, very well. Um, lots of written about that, and lots of people are very excited about what um, data can, uh, can potentially do. Um, at the same time, there are many challenges facing health and healthcare. And as a charity, we want to make sure that we're realizing the benefits of some of these uh, technologies to actually make tangible improvements uh, to the way that healthcare is delivered in the UK. This is our team. This is uh, a lovely set of uh, people. Some of them are on the agenda over the next few days. So I'd encourage you to check out their, um, uh, their talks. And what we do is five things. So firstly, as I said, we've got an analytics team uh, in-house. And what we, what we try to do is to do innovative data analytics are really focused on influencing practice and policy, uh, but also demonstrating the utility of novel analytics approaches. We create tools that we hope will be widely used, including code. We inform the national conversation about data and health, um, trying to influence national uh, data technology policy. Uh, for example, we've been commenting on the NHS uh, COVID app. Um, we support better data analytics through across the health and care system. Uh, including uh, work on the NHSR community. We build data analytics partnerships, and we also have a role supporting better analytics within the Health Foundation. Uh, our portfolio is quite broad, so I just wanted to tell you about four initiatives today. Um, our Network Data Lab, our Improvement Analytics Unit, um, our Advancing Applied Analytics Program, and our Strengthening Social Care Analytics Program as well. So firstly, the Network Data Lab, what's that about? Well, this is really uh, the genesis of this work is really um, comes from um, the work that we've done over the last five years to um, use linked data to inform national policy. Um, on the slide, I've just showed you three examples of the work that we've done in the past. Um, this is looking at the continuity of care and general practice, um, about patient activation, and also about multiple health conditions. And our team um, uses uh, linked um, primary secondary care records um, to uh, produce insights for policymakers. Um, our output tends to be um, um, 
it, it's it's more than just the data. We tend to uh, we do quite a lot of work to understand what the other uh, evidence have been showing. Uh, we also work closely with um, patients and with healthcare professionals to understand the problems they're addressing, and we package up the the data um, uh, alongside the other insights that we obtain to produce some clear recommendations to national policy. We publish our code, which is available at the GitHub link uh, below. This is the kind of work we've been doing over the last few years. Uh, but what we've realized is that um, there's some limitations to the way that we've been working. And our model so far has really been reliant on um, us bringing data into the Health Foundation, into our own secure environment. Um, what we've realized is that we could be more efficient by um, instead partnering with local teams who have access to uh, richer data sets than we do and um, also closer to the action and have other kinds of insights that we have in our team as well. So what we're doing in the Network Data Lab is to partner now with five local teams. We've just announced those. They're in Aberdeen, and Leeds, and Liverpool, London, and Wales. You have um, rich um, linked data sets, not just from the NHS, but social care. And we'll be working collaboratively to use these problems to tackle uh, national uh, policy challenges. Our first project kicking off is looking at uh, shielded patients. And over the next few years, we'll be uh, doing in-depth research, analysis of uh, healthcare trends, and also exploring different models of data stewardship. Um, as I said, this is a new initiative. It's just kicking off now. We've just announced the partners. But I hope you'll uh, follow this and the links below. The second thing I wanted to tell you about is our improvement AM6 units. Um, and this is a partnership with NHS England, uh, which is evaluating whether local change initiatives uh, which have implemented as part of national programs are improving care. Uh, we're trying to feed back uh, results uh, to local and national teams uh, reasonably quickly to improve care. Here's an example of the work that the IU is doing. And we've just published this a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's look, this particular study looked at an integrated care program in Mid Nottinghamshire. Uh, Mid Nottinghamshire had been working for a number of years as part of a um, uh, uh, a new care model and an integrated care system uh, to develop um, integrated care uh, interventions. Um, um, uh, the broad range of different interventions tried over a number of years. And what the IU was trying to do is understand whether the cumulative impact of these interventions um, uh, had, you know, what, what the cumulative impact was on emergency hospital emissions. The red line in this chart shows emergency emissions uh, per uh, 10,000 people in Mid Nottinghamshire. As you can see, they were going uh, generally up over time. The blue line is our control area. And what the team did was to uh, find other areas of England which had historically similar trends in emergency hospital emissions to Mid Nottinghamshire, and then follow that control area over time. And the very interesting thing about this analysis is that uh, we were able to follow the um, the trend over six years. And in the first few years, we actually saw um, no change in emergency emissions or possibly a slight increase. It took uh, three or four years for the integrated care uh, initiative to begin to show reductions in emergency emissions, uh, which is potentially quite a significant message for policy um, because, you know, uh, policymakers are um, very keen to reduce the numbers of emergency emissions, but tend to assume results uh, will occur within six to 12 months, whereas actually the study shows that patients are needed and they need to be supported for much longer periods of time with greater um, constancy to show the reductions in emergency emissions. So the IU's work is, you know, it's published online and um, we also publish our code and we hope that you will be um, able to uh, pick, pick some of this up and apply some other techniques locally. The third thing I wanted to mention was our is our applied analytics program. And this is our program which is trying to support you, um, so analysts within the health and social care system, to uh, become more effective and to really show what you can do um, in terms of using data to improve care. We published two reports, um, which are those shown on the slides. The first one was our diagnostic, which tried to understand um, what was the state of analytical capability in healthcare and what was what is needed to improve it. Um, the messages from that first report will be familiar to you. Um, and you'll have lived experience of this. Um, you know, generally speaking, we found that uh, 
the NHS had not invested sufficiently in its analytical teams um, and it tended to focus much more on building um, IP and maybe sorting out the data sets, but not necessarily in supporting the people who are needed to turn this data into insights. And we found that the problems um, uh, were uh, really uh, you know, quite complex, but you know, broadly speaking, there were kind of three clumps of problems. Firstly, um, the uh, analytical teams needed to be supported uh, in terms of having the you know, right training, particularly the right learning opportunities, the right opportunities to collaborate across organizational boundaries, um, the right data and tools as well. Uh, secondly, there's a challenge about ensuring that the users of analysis are, um, are sort of, you know, well educated in terms of what analytics can bring and able to engage with analytics teams with confidence. And the third area we talked about in that report was about the need to invest in analytical leaders. Um, people who can um, really uh, be the bridge between the analytical teams and the consumers of the analysis and help to anticipate the uh, analytical needs of their organizations and ensure that um, the analytical teams are able to uh, meet the demand. The second report that we published just last year was a follow on from that and it showed that um, you know, many of the same problems uh, persisted, but we have made progress over the last few years and there's some good news stories contained in that report. In terms of what we've been doing, uh, so firstly, we've we've opened up a funding stream called the Advancing Applied Analytics Program. We've had four rounds of this program now. Uh, we're now supporting uh, over 50 teams uh, within hospitals, general practices, um, CCGs, local authorities to use data to provide uh, better care. And those projects are published on our website and together, I think, are you know, quite a good repository that show what uh, more data teams can do. and. Um, you know, if ever you need um, some examples about how data can make a difference to patient care, I'd encourage you to look at those projects. Secondly, we've been supporting analytical networks, including the NHSR community, because we found from our work that um, analysts have lacked the ability to uh, really, uh, and the infrastructure needed to um, to you know, work with colleagues in different organisations, share learning, share code, know how, tackle problems together. We're delighted to support the NHSR community, as well as groups such as AFA and Plethora. Um, we've launched also the Analytical Capability Index, uh, which is a tool that local organisations can use to assess um, how well they are using data to improve care. And this is different from the Digital Maturity Index, which tends to focus much more on uh, the IT elements. This is more about um, whether organisations are making the best use of the data that are available. Um, just finally, just before I stop, I just wanted to mention a fourth area of our work, which is to do with social care. And we've seen um, during the pandemic that um, there have been remarkable innovation within NHS analytics. Uh, you've all done so well at using data to understand, uh, for example, how much critical care capacity hospitals have needed. Um, there's also been very rapid innovation uh, amongst the health data research community. Um, and we've seen, for example, uh, you know, remarkable things um, in the um, in the recovery trial. Uh, we used the data um, you know, in quite exciting ways to assess the impact of a sterile treatment for coronavirus. But there's been much less innovation within uh, social care, despite the fact that um, social care has been hit uh, horrifically um, by the pandemic, and uh, almost half the deaths at one point were occurring within uh, within care homes. And we think this is happening because there have been much less fire investment in um, in social care data. So when the pandemic hit, there was just not the same kind of infrastructure and ability needed to um, use data to tackle some of the problems that we were seeing within um, care homes and within domiciliary care. And as a charity, we wanted to make sure we are tackling that problem. So what we've done over the last few months is firstly engage with the social care sector to understand um, how data is being used within the sector and the key data challenges. And this is published online, I encourage you to have a look at the blog. Uh, there were two challenges that we pointed to. The first was really around um, the lack of data on the experience of social care users and people with social care need to um, aren't able to access services. And secondly, on the um, quite complex and mixed incentives that operate within the social care sector that uh, can inhibit uh, providers from sharing data. Um, 
we've done our own analysis looking at the impact of the pandemic on um, the social care sector, which is available, get our codes online. Um, and we're opening up a funding stream as well uh, called Strengthening Social Care Analytics, uh, which is now part way through the selection, but we're aiming to support up to four projects uh, that could really demonstrate what good social care analytics look like and help to accelerate uh, good practice. Um, coming soon is a community of practice for social care. Uh, we hope that if you're working in social care analytics, you'll get in touch and um, uh, join the community of practice and get involved in that. Um, that's all I wanted to say. I mean, that's a very quick canter of some of the things that we're doing. Um, we've got a few minutes at the end. Um, so if you have any questions uh, or just want to chat, um, love to do that. Thank you very much. A few sort of really positive messages on the chat, which is lovely. Thanks so much for that. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. Um, can you hear me all right, Adam? Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, we, we have had some uh, comments here. Um, so just one straightforward question about, is there any way that people can access patient imaging data in the UK? Are you aware of any initiative around imaging data? Yeah, um, uh, I don't know too much about imaging data. I know that there's a very exciting um, initiative um, that NHS X is leading about chest imaging at the moment. Okay, so uh, the, net, the the network data labs then, if 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 there is a um, if imaging data does come come as part of that portfolio of data sets, then um, I suppose the, the question could also be asked of the network data labs, really, about how other people might access the data that the Health Foundation is using to address key questions. Yeah. So what the um, we I mean it's, it is possible that we will. Um, uh, access imaging data to the network data lab. We started with a, um, a core set of data sets, which are really those that we need to track patients in the health and care system, so, you know, um, administrative records from hospitals, electronic medical records from primary care, social care data. And um, together as a group of five partners, we are you know, you know, we're working together, together to make sure that we can um, use and analyze these data um, in consistent ways and it makes sense with them across those five partner sites um, over time we'll bring in other data sets um, uh, as well um, we are very keen as a network data lab to share our uh, not just our not just the findings of our analysis but also how we're working with um, other other teams and also to learn from what the groups are doing um, mm -hmm. our code will be available online um, one of the developments we're uh, quite proud of is our approach to public and patient involvement and engagement, which is really central to the way the NDL is working. Um, we're working closely with patients to select the topics, uh, but also to make sense of the findings. Um, so we'll be publishing soon a public and patient involvement and engagement framework that I encourage you to have a look at and make, make use of if you can. Sounds very exciting, actually. And again, I think we would be very keen to hear about, about I mean, uh, uh, opportunities where, where you could disseminate through the through NHS Health Community. Um, I will just ask again if there's any other questions from colleagues. Um, I know the links are available and the, the, the call for social care analytics is uh, it's, it's open now, isn't it? We're just we're closed for the initial expressions of interest. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so okay. It's, uh, well, and we've been announcing the final winners uh, next January. Okay, great. Um, I think, again, we would, we would welcome that, that um, and I think this is now happening more, more, more systematically, by the way, the winners of the uh, Applied Analytics Awards or the Social Care Analytics, um, if they have got our related work that they're doing, then we want to kind of mm. kind of highlight them and link them back to the NHSR community. Definitely, no, definitely, okay. that's really important. Great. Uh, Adam, look, thank you so much, for, A, for coming and giving us sharing your time. It's been a pleasure, time. and um, congratulations on you know, pulling together such a great conference and looking forward to some of the other sessions. Okay, great. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Anastasia, can I hand back to you, please? Uh, yes, so thank you, Adam, once again. Uh, uh, 
Please keep, uh, keep in touch with us. And also, everyone, uh, you should know that uh, we will have Health Foundation again. We will have sessions tomorrow uh, with Ellen. And we will have uh, uh, a few uh, analytical sessions as well, one from uh, Sebastian and one from uh, Fiona and Emma. Uh, so now we're finishing this um, session. And we all hopefully will be move, moving to session number four. But again, if you uh, cannot wait to see our next speaker, um, then you can choose the session yourself, drop down menu on the top left corner. Uh, goodbye, Adam, and uh, see you later then. Bye.